good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Jing Wei Li. I have worked in research center Ulish in Germany for four years as a postdoc, and very recently I moved into industry working at Johnson Johnson. Uh, the work today I will present uh, was my postdoc exp experience when I was in research center of Ulish. Uh, sorry, how can I switch the slide? <laughs> ah, okay, thanks. Um, since this year, the DIC sim uh, uh, symposium focus on AI and machine learning, let's first have a look at uh, how uh, machine learning uh, can be applied in neuroscience field. Um, on the one hand, machine learning models can be built to classify patients uh, with mental disorders from healthy population and based on the data collected from the brain, such as neuroimaging. And on the, other, on the other hand, we can also use machine learning models to predict large scale of behavioral phenotypes uh, from neuroimaging data. Um, and I still don't know how to, ah, okay, here. I got it, um, sorry. <laughs> Uh, however, in many machine learning applications, people have discovered uh, prediction bias against the benefits of some minority groups, just as Sarah has mentioned uh, in her presentation. Um, here I give another example. A study showed that um, many commercial genetic classification systems generated um, uh, higher uh, accuracy in lighter skinned males compared to the contrast. And imagine such a uh, system to be applied to det detect suspects. Uh, then a worse prediction accuracy in darker skinned females would lead to higher uh, possibility to identify the wrong suspect uh, from this group, which is a severe uh, societal risk. The reasons for such a bias uh, could be that there wasn't enough data from the minority group for the model to learn. It could also be that during model optimization, uh, the model fits better to the majority groups. It can also be that uh, the model learned uh, the, from the data of the previous uh, societal or historical discrimination. Uh, given this context, the natural question would be, are the machine learning models applied in the neuroscience field, specifically when you predict uh, behavior phenotypes from uh, neuroimaging data such as functional connectivity data also um, generate bias uh, across different uh, groups, uh, subpopulations? Uh, especially currently in this, in this research field, um, people usually train the machine learning models based on a mixture of subpopulations, um, which, were mo uh, which was mostly dominated by white or European descendants. To study this question, we used two large-scale datasets, um, public datasets from the US uh, population, which have been intensively used to predict behavior phenotypes from uh, neuroimaging data. Um, the first dataset, the Human Connectome Project, uh, Young Adults dataset, contains uh, more than what, 900 subjects. Uh, and with 58 behavioral uh, measures examined. And the second data set, ABCD data set, uh, we used more than 5,000 uh, 5, subjects with uh, 36 behavioral measures. And both data sets were dominated by white Americans in sample size, and we want to uh, compare the prediction accuracy between white Americans and another minority ethnic group such as African Americans. One thing to be noted here is that uh, we use self-reported ethnicity or race, and therefore it represents uh, what the participants think they be which community or group the participants think they belong to. Uh, for both datasets, uh, the whole brain functional connect connectivity were used as the input feature uh, for the machine learning model to predict the behavior measures. Uh, the functional connectivity was cr uh, created across 400. Uh, a, a cortical area, shift atlas, uh, plus 19 uh, subcortical areas. We built kernel rate regression models to predict behavior phenotypes from resting state functional connectivity of individual brains. We trained and tested our predictive models uh, in a cross-validated way. So uh, for each uh, cross-validation, we train the model based on a mixture of ethnic, ethnic groups following how uh, 
how it was usually done in the field, and we test the models on uh, white Americans and African Americans, which are matched in terms of certain demographic, anthropological, uh, and behavioral variables. For each behavioral measures, uh, we compare the predictive uh, coefficient of determination, COD, uh, which is inversely related to mean squared error uh, between the two groups. In this figure, uh, the vertical axis represents the predictive COD, and the horizontal axis corresponds to each uh, individual behavior measures. Uh, blue violins correspond to uh, African-Americans, green violins correspond to white Americans, and red violin uh, is how much higher the predict predictive COD of white Americans are than the African-Americans and the gray violins uh, is the null distribution of the difference. Um, a star above means that the difference was significant. Uh, in the HCP dataset, we observed that for most of behavior measures, um, the white Americans enjoyed the lower prediction error, hence higher predictive COD compared to African Americans. And it is also true uh, using the ABCD dataset. Similar conclusion can be drawn when using linear regression to build predictive models or when, pre uh, when controlling uh, for different confounding variables. The COD accuracy metric does not show uh, to which direction the prediction was off compared to the original behavior scores. And hence, we also plotted the um, predictive behavior score minus the original behavior score uh, on the vertical axis of each subplot, and each subplot correspond to uh, a single behavior measure. And again, we use the same color code as before, so the blue violins uh, correspond to African Americans and uh, green violins correspond to Africa, uh, white Americans. And uh, in this uh, figure, we can see that for uh, we, we can see some worrisome consequences if we uh, adopt the predictive uh, prediction from the model uh, uncritically. For example, the, uh, for, uh, in the ABCD dataset, African American children ha were um, more overpredicted uh, in behaviors such as rubricing behavior or aggressive behavior than white American children. Um, so this behavior aspects can be used uh, for some uh, mental disorder diagnosis. If uh, this prediction is applied in reality, uh, then it would cause that uh, there would be higher false positive uh, rate in the African American children. And since the data sets were dominated by uh, white Americans, the training sample was dominated by white Americans, uh, we investigated if changing the composition of training population could uh, solve the problem. So we trained the model only on African-Americans, on uh, randomly selected white Americans with the same sample size, and on a combination of these two sets. So these uh, three types of training population are shown on the vertical axis in this plot, and the horizontal plot will show you the number of behavior measures who uh, had higher or lower Predictive accu uh, prediction accuracy in white Americans compared to African Americans. Um, the navy blue color means how many um, behaviors had higher uh, predict the prediction accuracy in white Americans, and light teal color means how many um, behavior measures had uh, better prediction accuracy in African Americans and the gray color uh, corresponds to the number of behavior measures who didn't show a significant difference. If we compare across the three types of training populations, we see that indeed when the model was, training on, was trained only on African Americans, uh, it corresponded to the fewest number of behavior measures who had uh, higher prediction accuracy in white Americans than African Americans. However, if we focus on the model trend on only uh, African Americans, we still see much more um, behavior measures who had uh, better prediction accuracy in white Americans. 
Um, there could be many reasons leading to the remaining bias. From the imaging perspective, uh, since long time ago, the pre-processing pre uh, strategies are parameters are uh, usually uh, optimized on white uh, European descendant populations, such as the standard brain templates or the functional atlases we use. And on the behavioral side, uh, the validity of the current standard uh, behavior measures uh, are still questionable. Uh, how they can be applied for minority groups are still questionable. Uh, since the models trained on different populations generated different results, we were curious what different patterns had the model learned from different populations. Hence, we plotted the brain behavior association the model learned from African Americans or white Americans uh, separately. And the brain behavior association the model uh, learned was uh, captured by the covariance between uh, functional connectivity and the predicted behavior score in the training set. And for each type of training population, we can have both positive or negative um, brain behavior associations. The positive association means that the model thinks uh, a higher functional connectivity corresponds to higher behavior score. <coughs> and uh, the negative association means that the model believes the higher functional connectivity corresponds to a lower behavior score. Then for each behavior measure and each type of training population and for positive and negative associations, we can have a chord diagram. And in this chord diagram, the nodes around, around the circle correspond to different brain networks and the arcs connecting any two brain networks uh, shows the strength of the brain behavior association. So how strong the functional connectivity was with the predicted beha behavior score. Um, although we observed, uh, although these patterns share a lot of similarity uh, when the model trained uh, African Americans or white Americans, we still observe many different patterns. Uh, here I show you one example. So on the second column, you see that when the model was trained on African Americans, uh, it learned a strong uh, negative association between the visual A limbic B functional connectivity with the behavior score long delivery core. Uh, however, on the fourth column, you don't see this pattern when the model was trained on white Americans. Instead, you see a slight uh, positive association uh, when the model was trained on African Americans. Um, however, this difference cannot be directly interpreted as uh, neurobiological or neuropsychological differences across the populations. It is because during uh, data processing, data collection, uh, there are many steps that could introduce artificial bias into the data and further be learned by the machine learning models. Uh, in our most recent study, we also investigated the association of the prediction, uh, prediction error um, amplitude with many different inter-individual factors, uh, including uh, ethnicity and race, here beyond uh, white Americans and African Americans. So we study across all the uh, ethnic groups included in this data sets. Um, here shown in the, on the vertical axis in this figure, and the horizontal axis uh, will show you the prediction arrow of uh, pre uh, behavior category here, the cognition in the ABCD data set. Uh, we used uh, one-way ANOVA to test the uh, significance uh, of the prediction error difference across ethnic groups, and we found uh, the difference was uh, very significant across this group, and uh, visually we can see that uh, white Americans had uh, lower prediction error compared to all the other groups. And you can also observe uh, similar patterns for other behavior categories. Here I show in the other figures. And generally, uh, white Americans had lower prediction error compared to the other groups, and African Americans and Hispanic Americans uh, had higher prediction uh, errors. And we also did the similar analysis, the same analysis in the HCP data set. Here the uh, uh, vertical and horizontal axis are flipped in these figures for better visualization. And uh, we also see that the behavior pattern, the, the, be, the prediction error across uh, different ethnic groups are also very uh, significantly different across these groups. Um, well, uh, it's well, uh, like we, we, uh, sh if you want more details, you can come to our poster this year, uh, 1379. 
And uh, here, in summary, I, we have observed uh, worse behavior prediction accuracy in African Americans than white Americans generated by machine learning models using two large scale data sets. Looking into the direction of the prediction errors, problematic consequences uh, against uh, conclusions against the interest of African Americans could be drawn if the prediction was uh, adopted um, uncritically. Um, by altering the training sample po uh, population, we have observed uh, some um, population-specific effect on the prediction bias. However, it could not fully address the problem. The prediction bias was not only between white Americans and African Americans, but broadly existing across groups. Um, by the end of this talk, I would like to advocate the importance of collecting more data from minority groups. Not only the number of uh, samples, uh, the number of subjects in each group matters, uh, the definition of uh, groups also matters. In the context of US datasets, uh, both Chinese and uh, Indians are c categorized together as Asian. However, they are very different uh, in culture, religion, and language. We should also be aware that the problem existed in uh, the US dataset might also exist in other country. Um, for example, at this moment, there are a few large scale datasets being collected in uh, China and we should also uh, make sure that uh, the minor minority groups are not understudied. Minority groups are not just defined as ethnic groups. Uh, it could also be people with lower social class, um, and in our poster this year, we also showed that people with uh, lower uh, social economic status also uh, corresponded to a higher prediction error. Uh, I should also reiterate that this study aims to promote fairness of future applications of artificial uh, intelligence across populations. On the contrary, people should not um, draw any conclusion on the difference of uh, neurobiological, neuropsychological difference across the groups. Um, and ethnicity or race is a very complex concept. Um, it is much influenced by the historical and uh, societal factors. I feel very grateful to have the warmest support from my supervisors, my uh, colleagues, and my collaborators, thanks to the funding agencies to make this work possible. And I would also like to thank my current employer, Johnson Johnson, to support me to attend this conference this year. And thank you, the audience, for your attention.